Hello and welcome back. It's another episode here in the garage and today the focus is on the front end of the engine where I've just received some custom brackets and mounts from LSX Innovations. These guys are over on the west coast and just like a lot of the stuff that we've been doing with this project it's all made in-house it's a small business everything's built and sourced here in the us of a which matches with our chevy v8 just perfectly so i've got various brackets and holders and bolts and things that are going to mount our accessory drive to the front of this engine and work with the truck spacing of the crank pulley right there so the first step is probably the alternator bracket, which is this one here, and it just bolts up to the, to the block. Uh, however, with the iron block truck engines, there's actually a bolt hole that's missing. So what you need is this drill and tap kit that LSX Innovations also provides, and even better, comes with several pages of instructions so you don't screw it up. We'll go ahead and jump into that. And I think that'll probably cover us for today. All right, so the first step here is to get the bracket in position and that'll tell us or help us line up the drilling. And as you can see, here is the spot where the bolt hole should be and it is not. That's where we're gonna be drilling. So we use this piece to line it up and it actually has an insert as well to help guide the drill bit. And we'll go ahead and start making some holes in the engine. And then once we have this in position where the bushing is flush against the block, we we'll go ahead and tighten everything down. Here goes nothing. Now that we're drilled, I go ahead and start tapping. And once you get the first couple threads taken care of, you actually go ahead and remove the bracket assembly. And that'll let us finish the tap. And we'll just take this nice and easy. And there you have it one brand new bolt hole. Ta-da! So I think another good thing to take care of while we're in this area is the oil dipstick tube. The Canton Pan has these provisions and there's the really cool thing they do is they put one of these on each side. So depending on your setup and whatever works best, you can put the dipstick on this side or on the other side so it doesn't get in the way. So all you gotta do, Unscrew that little plug right there and then thread in our new GM dipstick. I'm gonna put a little bit of thread sealer on here first before screwing it in. I love this stuff because it's easy to apply. It's a little bit more resilient than Teflon tape and most importantly, just helps to prevent leaks, which I hate. So that's in and good and happy, but I'm really confused about something and I'm hoping that maybe somebody out there can fill me in or maybe I'll just do a little bit more digging. It's, so there's, this is a specialty oil pan and a specialty dipstick. They're from the same company, but what I'm kind of unsure about is when you read a normal dipstick, you know, obviously you're looking at the level. How, does, how do we know what the appropriate level is? Whatever the oil capacity of this pan is, and like, how do we know that everything is the same? If I kind of eyeball this here, the, the dipstick goes down to, I guess having the oil like almost quarter inch up this little neck here. That seems like a lot of oil in the pan. I don't know if that's too much oil or is this dipstick too short? So that's my question to you is, how do you know? 
I might have gotten a little bit ahead of myself doing the dipstick as I never actually completed fitting the alternator bracket and I don't know if that's going to interfere with our dipstick right here. So let's go ahead and check that out before we get any further. All right. Okay, and the good news is we've got clearance. I was worried about the rear brace, uh, but apparently only F-body alternators use a rear brace, and this is the alternator from the original engine here, the truck engine, and it does not use a rear brace. So, it's really just held on by this one and two bolts. I hope that is enough, I think it is. Uh, it should be good and sturdy. All right, well that was easy enough, and I mean these LSX innovation parts are making this super simple. Fitment is really great on everything. They provide the hardware, which sometimes is the biggest pain in the butt, trying to figure out the hardware. So I got brand new hardware, threads in perfectly, everything fits great. Uh, and then maybe most importantly, or third importantly, whatever you want to call it, the instructions, step by step how to do it, pictures, where it goes. I mean, I'm not familiar with how this GM accessory drive stuff works, so having that guidance there has been really, really helpful. This is going all right, so normally where we would stop and say, good job, let's keep going until something doesn't work. So, I think that's gonna be putting this water pump on. Ugh. So, I think that the nature of the gaskets on these water pumps, since it's this metal with like a little rubberized O-ring in it, I think that means I don't need any sealant on this water pump. But if you know differently, please let me know. We can try and avoid leaks, that'd be awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and sold this dry as I think it goes dry. And let's see how this fits up. So what I'm using here is the Camaro water pump, and that's the one that's designed to work with this LSX Innovations fitment or accessory kit. So let's go ahead and line this up and already it's starting to foul on a little water. Uh, my steam port modification here. Okay, well, remember when I said let's try and do something that doesn't work? There we go. We are in some clearance issues here with this little throttle body water port. I don't really think I need that one necessarily. Or maybe I can uh, rotate it and, and angle that for a little bit more clearance. It would be nice to use that for the steam port exit. On this side where I've got the steam port and how I previously routed it into the throttle body, which I think will be helpful I can now go ahead and put that back together. So I think if I just rotate the exit on this port here, that'll give me just enough clearance to slip a hose on there. And just like that, through the magic of video, we've got clearance. So we're good. YJ was bended up. All right, folks, you knew it was gonna happen. Problem number one. Got the water pump on and I've also got the idler uh, sorry, I got the water pump on, and I've also got the tensioner pulley on now as well. And if we take a look, it doesn't look like the water pump pulley is coming out far enough. And then if we look at the tensioner pulley, it definitely looks like it's not coming out far enough to meet up with that truck crank pulley and our alternator setup. So the alternator and the idler pulley perfectly in line. Looks like this needs to come out maybe like another half inch uh, and that'll also probably put our tensioner in line a bit. Now I have heard about water pump spacers. I just said maybe it's an oversight on my part. Maybe we need them on this. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll just keep looking and keep researching but I think 
the water pump spacers ought to do the trick and that'll push us out just far enough. No problem uh, coming out a little bit further. And that should hopefully do the trick. And now just for completeness, I'm gonna go ahead and put the LSX Innovations power steering bracket on as well, just to make sure that at least all the brackets from LSX Innovations are fitting appropriately. Okay, so we've got power steering on. Here's our pulley. I don't have a pulley installer right now, so I won't be able to put this on properly. But if I just kind of look at the dish of this pulley and line things up, it looks like it'll slot in perfectly. And then just to double check here for uh, outer clearance, looks like everything will fit there good as well. Well, that about covers it for today. We've got really all of the accessory drive put in here. And we can now cool things, charge, steer, stuff. Definitely gonna look into the water pump spacing because I think it definitely needs to come out. Again, maybe another quarter inch, half inch, whatever. And that'll get everything lined up perfectly. The LSX Innovations brackets and kits and hardware and instructions were fantastic. Highly recommended, made in America. And other than that, we are really close to firing this thing up. I'm finishing up all the wiring inside the car. I think I've got just about everything ready to go ahead and press the button, see what happens if this thing turns over. Again, hit me up with your advice on the oil dipstick tube. Just wanna get your thoughts, make sure we know what kind of or how much oil to put in this thing. No idea with the specialty oil pan, uh, how that's gonna affect things and really what kind of oil levels these things want. So let me know there. Other than that, I think, uh, I think that's about a wrap for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. If you're into this, like, share, subscribe. We're almost there. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later.